for tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thursday evening, March the 26th, 1998. First service of spring camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. <laughs> and uh, and this, this is Irma, uh, my other side. And, uh, uh, and uh, okay, and uh, I'll make one remark real quick uh, since that's right. Jack Harris will not be able to be here. He's feeling fine. But his wife's father is uh, very ill, and they weren't for sure this morning that he would live through the day. So he just uh, felt that it was, well, it just wouldn't have been right. It was, you know, just, so anyway. Uh, I'm going to ask Dr. Null to come up and uh, greet you. He'll be ministering in the morning prayer meeting. He's from Salina, Kansas. And uh, Dr. Null... Uh, he will also be ministering in the men's meeting, and he'll be ministering Saturday in the afternoon deliverance session, t- teaching. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I'd like to invite all of you to come to the 6 o'clock prayer meeting. Uh, we pray for our nation, and we pray for Glenn and Irma and the camp staff, and we pray for the missionaries, and we pray for uh, the suffering church, and then we pray for people in bondage, and then we pray for your and we pray for your needs, and then we we pray for anything else that God lays on our heart. The uh, God's very gracious. Uh, John Wesley said that the will of God will not come to pass until believers pray for it to come to pass. If you want to meet Jesus Christ, you meet Him in prayer. Amen. You meet Him in prayer. I invite you to come to the prayer meeting in the morning and uh, meet Jesus in, in a deeper way. The, uh, at a camp meeting like this, we, uh, we have lots of people who come in. And I have to ask you that uh, we have rules here about prayer meetings and about uh, pathetic words. Uh, we ask you not to hold private prayer meetings in, in, the, in the upstairs. We ask you uh, not to let someone that you don't know come up and lay hands on you and pray for you. Now, if this person is your pastor, then, of course, you can let your pastor pray for you. But if it's someone that you don't know that is not on the ministry team, Brother and Sister Coffee, Bill and Peggy, Brother Smith, Tommy, Glenn and Irma, Joel and Melanie, uh, we ask you uh, if they want to pray for you, then have them come up here to the front and have one of the elders uh, oversee this. But I would ask you, you know, the, the Scripture says uh, don't lay your hands hastily on anyone and be very careful about who you let lay hands on you. Uh, the, um, those are the rules. If you, have, if you feel you have a pathetic word for someone, if you feel you have a pathetic word here in the, in the, in the meeting, you're free to speak it forth for it to be discerned. If you feel that you have a word of knowledge or a, uh, a word for someone, uh, that's fine, but should be given him in front of the ministry that it might be discerned. Do not receive a, a word of knowledge from someone unless it's given according to the rules laid down to protect you. For just remember that the enemy comes as an angel of light. The enemy comes as an angel of light. And those that is given for your protection. Uh... It is not meant to quench the spirit, but it is meant uh, 
You know, the Bible says test all things. Test all things. And uh, praise you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I just thank you for all these good people now, Lord God. Lord, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to release your ministering spirits now to come forth, Lord God. To minister and protect them. I ask for the war angels, Lord, to come now, Lord God, and bind up any loose spirits in the name of Jesus and carry them away, Lord. I ask for the ministering spirits to minister and the war angels to protect. We thank you for it, Lord, for you said, are they not all ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation? We thank you for it, Lord. Just let your spirits come down, Lord, and protect, Lord God. I bind any spirits of fear. For you did not give us a spirit of fear, Lord, but you gave us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. I thank you for it, Lord, that you came that we might be delivered from bondage to fear. In the name of Jesus, I bind fear, Lord, and loosen, Lord God, loosen the ministering spirits to come forth in the name of Jesus. I thank you and praise and bless you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I hope to see all of you at 6 o'clock in the morning. Amen. How about the Coffee family coming up here and introducing themselves? Mildred and Jim Coffee from Tennessee. Right. Tennessee. Man. <coughs> Praise the Lord. We're so we're so glad to be here. We're we're so glad that you're here. Amen. And we just praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. And his grace. Can I read a scripture to you? I want to, I want to share something the Lord's been giving me. And it's, I promise I'll speak in just a minute. Uh, Psalms 103. Uh, I was just talking to the Lord the other day. You see, I, you know, us folks getting a little older. And I had my 71st first, first birthday pretty soon. And I was saying, Lord, you know, deliverance is um, <clears throat> a lot of work. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> your word says that uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I said, but Lord, give me a scripture. And so this is what he gave me. In Psalm 103, he, uh, I'm going to start with verse 1, but I'll get to where I'm going. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the ego. Hallelujah. But wait a minute. Hallelujah. Back up to the first part of that. He said, who satisfies thy mouth with good things. So, you, you begin to praise and thank the Lord for all of his blessings, all of what, that he's given, he's given unto you. You know, he says, then his courts, his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And you just start thanking the Lord of the morning when you start, before you start praying for all his goodness and his mercy and his grace. And then uh, you pr- receive your strength as you praise him. So, and then, you use, see, we're using our mouth. To bless the Lord and then begin to confess, I thank you, Lord, for restoring my youth like the eagle. See, it's God's word in you and I coming out of our mouth that that does the work. Now, I, t- I was talking to church the other night and I was teaching the church and I said, you know, I stand up here and talk to you and read the word to you and say a lot of things to you and you listen. I mean, you know, you're hearing, I think. But, you know, you listen to what you say, and you believe what you say. So you need to start confessing what God says about you, the good things he's done for you, and then what he says he's, he's given you. All the promises are yes and amen. amen. And so I said, you guys uh, look at me. I know, you know, you're not where I am yet. You're in age-wise. Inside of me, there's a young person. <laughs> well, he said... The inner man is renewed, and I kept t- and I, I started out by telling the Lord He had to do something to the, this body to keep up with the inner man. So there we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's start confessing with the mouth what the Word says and believing it in the heart. And when you confess it, you believe it, and it'll begin to work in your life, and in healing also. I, I, I just did a teaching on, on healing. I was. Saying I was sick and tired. I titled my message, Are You Healed? Everybody I see is walking around sick. 
Well, not everyone, but a lot of people. And, and I want to see God's people healed, so we need to start confessing. By his stripes, I was healed 2,000 years ago. See, the good things out of our mouth. And as he heals our body, he restores our strength and our youth like the eagle. Amen? Amen. And that's my other half. <laughs> that's Mildred. Amen. And I'm Jim. Right. In case you had some doubt in your mind about who we were. We're the Coffees. Our name is Coffee. Uh, we pastor a church in Millington, Tennessee. She's preached to you now. Uh, we, we're deliverance preachers. Uh, we, we minister deliverance every week in our church. Uh, tw- twice a week usually at night, Wednesday night and, and uh, Sunday night. Sometimes we don't even get to preach on Sunday morning. Somebody comes in with a problem and we have to take care of whatever is happening at that particular time. So that's who we are. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, all oh, we come before you tonight to thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your graciousness, for your grace, Lord, for your mercy and your kindness, Lord. We lift, you, we lift up our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, tonight. By our very presence here, we've come to learn of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we lift him up. I take this opportunity, Lord, to bind the powers of the enemy that have come against this camp. I bind Satan power. Father, you gave us authority over all of the power of the enemy. That's your word, Lord. We stand upon your word that you've given that to us. If we'll believe and, and begin to walk in this, this power, Lord, you will, you will back it up. And as we bind, you said whatever we bind here on earth, you would bind also from the heavens. So, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I bind Satan's power over this camp, right? Right now, in, in the area of witchcraft, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I destroy that power and the curse that's been loosed through witchcraft over this camp, over the individuals, over Glenn, over Irma, over uh, the, the Huddlestons, over uh, the secretaries, over the whole camp for the work of the camp. I destroy it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and release them from the power of the enemy. I bind the spirits in the heavens that support all this activity here on earth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come against the heavenlies that, that give power and, and authority to these, to these demons, Father. And I bind them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You said that we, we had authority to, and the power to bind. And in the name of Jesus, I take that authority tonight and I cut off that power over this camp and over each individual in the sound of my voice to, to let them receive of the word and to hear the word. I bind those spirits in their mind right now that stop them from hearing and perverting the word that comes forth in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they can hear, Lord. I praise you and I thank you for your word. I give you glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now, you met Bill Goodson up here dancing and singing. Uh, But uh, you didn't meet Peggy. Peggy, at least... Now, you're better than that. Well, anyway, that's Peggy. And she has a wonderful, wonderful testimony, and, and uh, uh, we should have, she should have been down here for the ladies' meeting to give uh, her testimony to the women. Uh, maybe next time uh, we'll see that she's here to do that. Amen. 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 Now, uh, uh, I appreciate all of you that, are, that have come, but I want uh, uh, Brother Jim Lambert to come up here, yes, and greet you all. And uh, I think it's getting time that he needs to be ministering service or so around here. Amen. Bring Albert. Bring the other half along. Okay. They're uh, they're from uh, Beaumont, Texas, and uh, uh, they they minister. They have a good church down there. And it's just too bad that we haven't been down there to visit. Amen. Perfectly okay. Well, uh, thank God that we're here to be uh, again here with you. Uh, I'm uh, uh, at all at the presence of God and uh, sort of uh, caught off guard in the sense that Glenn would ask me to come up here. I'm, I humble myself. I, uh, I'm just uh, glad to be here to receive the Word of God. You know, I, I, I would like to encourage you. Uh, deliverance is the children's bread. Amen. And that we need to uh, really be uh, committed this is a ministry where we should be committed and be found faithful Amen. and that we should have some direction. Amen. You know, we sold out some years ago and just completely sold out. 
to set the captives free. And we've been doing a lot of ministry abroad and local. And a lot of ministries have come and tried to get help. And yet with all of the work that God has uh, put upon us to do, uh, we still find time to come to get fed. You know, and so that we can help other people. So we're here to, uh, to learn more. Uh, so that we might be able to go back and share uh, the good news of the gospel. But uh, I'm, I'm without words at this time because I, I'm just one of the... Uh, I had a demon tell me and Brother Dean one night we were casting out demons, and the demon said, well, you're just small fry, you know. <laughs> I said, well, small fry is here to help you out. <laughs> so I'm not bashful by any means, but I am kind of called off guard because I'm not, I'm not prepared to h- hang in here with the big boys. But, uh, uh, but I, I, I love all of you, and uh, that's... Uh, we're really here just to, to learn and to, uh, to be of help in any way we can. And we, you know, we just like you, we've got a suitcase full of our battlefield testimonies. And God's given us a lot of victories, but he's given us some, some defeats so that we can be sure to know that we need to go to him. You know, my wife, Alberta, has been, been faithful with me. for the, We had our 10th year anniversary here in uh, Arkansas on uh, October the 30th. And uh, we were right here for the deliverance meeting. And uh, she's been battling with me, and we've been battling together fighting the warfare against the powers of darkness, and we realize that we just touched the surface. Amen. All right, Amber? Yeah, come on. <laughs> come on, lady, come on. I'm just going to say God bless each of you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, baby. Brother David Brogdon should be about halfway here from the airport by now. He'll be coming in in a little bit, but I want Bill Smith to come up and greet you all, and he'll be ministering in the morning service in the morning, and uh, we'll give him a couple of minutes here if he can manage that. Come on, Brother Bill. It's so wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. It's wonderful to be a part of what God is doing in the earth today. Aren't you grateful that we're just not hung upon one thing? That God has brought us to the place of this deliverance that we need, we can handle that. We move by the Spirit of the Lord, we can do that too. And we have to watch sometimes because we'll get into the everlasting gospel mode and then forget to unplug. But we are so grateful to be here and we're grateful for what God is doing and, you know, When I got into this race, I didn't know anything about delivering the curses off from our children and all of these things. And you know, we've lost out a lot by not knowing about these things. But I'm grateful today that God is teaching us how that we can walk in this and walk and go free. Praise the Lord. We know that we're living in an hour when the enemy is working both shifts, day and night. But, you know, I was just thinking, as the brethren were testifying, you know, in Revelation chapter 5, and it said there's a strong angel, you know, he's proclaiming. And then it goes on, and he said, and he wept much, wept much, because no man was found worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. But then, you know what? One of the elders... And I think of that today when he said in Malachi, he said, I will send my messenger and he shall come to the temple. Praise the Lord. And I feel like that the messenger of God is crying out and said, weep no more. Weep no more because the lion who is the king of all of the beasts. The lion of the tribe of Judah had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Praise the Lord. And then you know something? We're not destroyed for the lack of knowledge because we haven't rejected it. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you. Looking forward in the morning. Well, we're going to turn the rest of the night over to Tommy Cook. He won't preach the everlasting gospel too much, but he'll keep you busy finding scriptures. I have counted one time he used almost a hundred scriptures in one service. So uh, he'll, uh, you'll get the word. It'll be the word. And uh, uh, Brother Tommy and Wanda are 
uh, are from uh, uh, Tulsa, and Wanda is Irma's helper here at the house when she comes. I'm always glad to see Wanda come along because she's, she is a blessing at the house, and Tommy is a blessing to all of us in ministry. Uh, brother Tommy, come and let me put this on you also for our brother here. All right. Praise God. Can everybody hear me back there? Let's stand. May the Lord bless you. Praise God. Let's all lift your voice and pray tonight. Father God, we do thank you for this time, Lord. We bless your holy name. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We exalt you. We lift you up tonight, Lord. We ask the Holy Spirit to move tonight, Lord. Move through this word, Lord. Speak to your people. Minister life, health, and strength to each one here tonight, Lord. Oh, Father, God, touch them with joy tonight. Touch your people, Lord God, in their hearts tonight, Lord. Those that need healing in their hearts, heal them tonight, Lord. Heal the inner man, Lord God. We love you, Lord. We praise you. God, we thank you for everyone that's here. We give you honor and praise for those that are here and those that are yet coming, Lord. We pray for their safety and their safe arrival in Jesus' name. And we bless the ministers here. And, Lord, in all the word that they shall bring, and everybody said amen. amen. In Jesus' name, and may God bless you. Praise the Lord. And Bill was talking about that, um, that Scripture in Revelation. I tell you, I, boy, I, how many love the book of Revelation? Well, how many love the Bible? <laughs> but um, I was studying last night on the 10th chapter of Revelation, and I thought maybe I'd bring that word, but I don't think I'll, I'll be able to do that tonight. But we need... We need the Word of the Lord for today, don't we? Amen. How many believe we need to be established in the present truth? Amen. Anybody want present truth? Amen. Praise God. How many know we can't live on yesterday's manna? Come on, it's a new day, isn't it? There's a new people with a new diet rising in God. How many believe that? Amen. Amen. I, I hunger for God. I thirst for Him. I want to take you to Joshua tonight. It's good to see Jim and his uh, wife, Bert, tonight with us. Praise the Lord. Good to have you, Jim. Go, let's go to Joshua chapter 9 in the um, Old Testament. I want to give you a couple of scriptures as we uh, share tonight. Uh, as the Lord directs, I'll, I'll bring the word, uh, show you what we're going to share in just a minute. In chapter 9 and verse, uh, chapter 9 of, of Joshua. Yeah, that's it. Verse uh, 1. It came to pass when all the kings which were on this side Jordan, in the hills and, and in the valleys and in the coast of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, Canaanite, Perizzite, Hivite, Jebusite, heard thereof. Everybody's there except the mosquito bite. All right. Now, now verse, two, verse 2. That they gathered themselves, come on, together. Now, this is the enemy. They gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. Now, if the enemy can fight with one accord, how many believe we need to get in one accord? And fight our enemy, not each other. You know, the devil sits back and laughs when we fight each other. I want to tell you, brother, we have an enemy. It's the devil and all his hosts. Can you say amen? amen? Now, let's go to Revelation 17. Look at the scripture there with this in Revelation 17. And look at verse 12, please. I want to show you we have an enemy here tonight that we're dealing with. And chapter 17 of Revelation, verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, or ten kings, or kingdoms which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind. How many heard that? Uh -huh. And shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb. How many know the Lamb's in you and me tonight? Uh -huh. And if He's in us, how many know we're going to be thrust into this war? Right. And so He said, He shall make war with the Lamb. And the Lamb... The Lamb that's in you and me tonight shall what? Come on. Overcome them. For he is Lord of Lords. Come on. And King of Kings. And they that are with him. Here's the overcomers. Are called, chosen, and faithful. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. So, brethren, they have one mind. And they're set against the Lamb of God. How many know the devil hates Jesus? Come on. Amen. And the devil hates you because Jesus is in you and me. Can you say Amen. Now, go to Judges. Let's go to Judges, chapter 2 in the Old Testament. Judges, right after Joshua, chapter 2. And I want to look at verse, uh, let's see, verse uh, uh, 21. Judges 2, verse 21. Judges 2, 21. And I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations, which Joshua did. What, what did he do? Come on, what did Joshua do? Left. Left when he died. 
So there were some enemies left when he died. You can go up in chapter 11. In fact, let's go to chapter 11. We'll come right back here. Look in chapter 11. Let's see some enemies that was not taken care of. How many believe every enemy we don't deal with, come on, he's going to stick his head up somewhere down the road? How many believe that? All right, now, I said, go to Joshua 11. Joshua 11. And we'll come back here to Judges. Joshua chapter 11. I want to show you some enemies that have to be, have to be dealt with later on. Uh, chapter 11, verse 22. The latter part of verse 21 actually says, Joshua destroyed certain cities. <clears throat> now, verse 22. In verse 22, there was none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel only. That means some's left. In Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod, there remain. How many can see that? Now, how many know that Gaza was the place where Samson went into the harlot? And it snared him, didn't it? And Gath is where the giant came from. And he came out roaring against the people of God, didn't he? And blaspheming God and the people of God. And Ashdod, you read uh, in, chapter, in Nehemiah chapter, th- uh, chapter 13, that the children of Israel intermarried, and they could not speak the Jewish language. And so, brethren, there were some enemies left that was not dealt with. Now, let's go back to chapter 2 of jo- uh, Judges. Chapter 2 of Judges. <clears throat> and so we must deal with every enemy in our life. How many believe we got a lot of enemies tonight? All of us. And sometimes I might see yours and you might see mine. How many know we need some help? Praise the Lord. Sometimes we can't see our enemy. Maybe our brother and sister can see it. In Judges chapter 2, though, he said this, though. Again, in verse 21, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died, that through them the enemy... How many believe God's using your enemy? Huh? That through them I may prove Israel. Or we could say today, I'll prove the church. Whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. Therefore, the Lord left those nations, that's an enemy, without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. So God left some enemies. God left some nations. And brethren, we have some enemies that God's left in our land tonight. That we have to deal with. Now, chapter 3, verse 1. Now, these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan. Only that the generations of the children of Israel might know. Here's what, now, here's, here's what God's saying. To teach them war, yes. at the least such as before knew nothing thereof. So God left the enemy in their land to teach them war. Yes. And how many know you're going to know warfare when you deal with your enemy? Yes. So am I, brother. Can you say amen? Now, let's go to Numbers 33. Numbers 33 in the Old Testament. Verse 55. All right, verse 55. Chapter 33 of Numbers, verse 55. But if you will not drive out, but if you will not drive out, and how many know it's easy just to settle down and do nothing? That's the flesh, isn't it? You've got to rise up in the Spirit and deal with those enemies. But if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land... In fact, Bill prophesied about conquering the land tonight, didn't he? The inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which you let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes. How many ever got a little cinder or something in your eye? And it hurt, didn't it? Well, he said these will be pricks in your eyes. They'll pierce your eyes. How many know the eyes of revelation? Insight. Come on, perception, discernment. Isn't that right? And he said, I'm going to deal with your eyes. With pricks. Then he said, thorns. Thorns in your side. You ever felt like somebody was a thorn in your side called a demon? Come on. <laughs> Come on, help me now. And shall vex you in the land wherein you dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. If you don't deal with your enemies, God says. So we have enemies. And how many know some of us know some enemies we have we're not dealing with? Okay? We may need some help. That's all right. Get the help, but get them out. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, now let's go over to Genesis chapter uh, 15 and verse 16. My Bible's coming apart here. <laughs> it really is. Genesis 15. Genesis 15. How many believe that we have an enemy called the Amorite tonight? And God spoke something to me uh, when I was praying. I think it was this morning. 
How many it's good to hear the Holy Ghost when you pray? Amen. Amen. How many how many like to hear the Holy Ghost? Amen. Amen. And we'll deal with that later, maybe. Genesis fifteen. Look in verse uh, what verse verse four. Let's go back to verse thirteen. It said, He said to Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them. How long, brethren? Four hundred years. years. That's four generations. Now, we said generations forty years. Right here, I'll show you. It's, it's a, a generation's a hundred years. Now, also, the nation whom they shall serve will I judge. That was Egypt. And after they shall come out with great substance, which they did. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. He died at 175. Abraham did. But in the fourth generation, so you got 400 years, you got four, four generations. They shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is what? Come on, help me now. Not yet full. Not yet full. Well, how many believe that there's some cups getting full today because of iniquity? Can you say Amen. And so God said that in that fourth generation, you will come hither again because the, that, that iniquity, that we'd say the cup of the iniquity of the Amorites was not yet full. Now, in order to deal with our enemy, how many know, look in chapter 23 of Exodus. Let me show you several things here, how that, that uh, was with God's people. And how many believe we got more on our side than we have against us? Do, do you believe that? Exodus 23, verse 20. And aren't you glad we have more for us? Exodus 23, 20. Now listen to what the Lord said. Behold, I sent an angel before thee. How many believe he went before us? And brethren, how many know a lot of times the angel is the Lord in the Old Testament? Amen? And uh, how many know there was, uh, there's, a, there's a word called Christophany. I think I said that right. Where he appeared different, uh, to different people in the Old Testament. Remember Joshua, he saw the angel of the Lord there and, uh, and he bowed and worshipped him. How many know, I, I believe that was the Lord. He was a captain of the Lord's host. No angel would have took worship. He said, Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place, notice that, the place that I prepared. And I believe he's preparing that place for us too, don't you? Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name, come on, is in him. My nature is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to thine adversary. Hallelujah. For mine angel shall go before thee. Why? To bring thee uh, into the Amorite, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Now, is that our promise too? Is this just one book or two books? No, it's one, isn't it? It's for you and I. This, is, this Bible, what it was, pertains to Israel, it also pertains to us. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. And so God said, I will cut them off. But I'm sending that angel before you. I'm sending because my nature, my name's in him. Now, as we see uh, several things. So it took the angel of the Lord, number one, to drive the enemy out and to bring the people in. Number two, go to Deuteronomy. Let's see the second thing that God used. Deuteronomy 7. And how many believe God's got some... Some enemies he can use against the enemy. <laughs> Deuteronomy 7, 20. And it said in verse 20, Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet. Yes. And if there's not a door, you'll make two or three of them. Come on. <laughs> Among them. Until they that are left, come on, and hide themselves from thee, be destroyed. So God said, I'll send the hornet. How many believe he can even turn demons on demons? I mean, believe that. He can cause them to fight each other. You ever pray confusion in the enemy's camp? God throw them into confusion. Let them fight one another. Come on. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. I do it once in a while. <laughs> Just don't do it enough. And then there was Moses. How I many know oh, God used Moses as deliverer, didn't he? Trained 40 years in Egypt. Amen. It's 40 years in the wanderings back to the side of the desert. And then 40 years, of course, leading Israel out. That's 120 years. And that number 120 is a tremendous number. But I'm not going to get into that now. And then number four, Israel. God used Israel to fight the enemy. So you have the angel, you have the hornets, you have Moses, you have Israel. And so, brethren, again, we have more on our side tonight than there are against us. Can you say amen? amen. I believe with all my heart. So we see here, and now let's go back to Genesis before we start. Genesis 15. I want to give this scripture again here in Genesis 15 about the Amorite. Verse 16. Let's see what he said again there. 15, 16. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither... 
again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Praise God. Now, let me tell you what the, the Amorite means. The word Amorite has several meanings. But one of the meanings is publicity. Publicity. How many believe there's some ministries that want publicity the wrong way? Please hear me. This word publicity means attention. They want attention. It means notoriety. It means circulation. You know, a big circulation ministry. Uh, advertising. Promotion. Propaganda. A build-up. That's what the word means. Then, then the word means prominence. Amorite means prominence. Now listen to this. Which means fame. Distinction. Importance. Renown. Prestige. Preeminence. Notability. Reputation. A name. Significance. Greatness. Honor. Dignity. Might. And superiority. How many know that's the enemy? As you said it right there, Doc. A spirit of pride. So in the Amorite, in the Amorite is P-R-I-D-E. Can you say amen? amen? And how many know the Bible said that, that the king, over the, uh, which is the devil, which is Leviathan, he is the king over all the children of pride. Amen? You know, pride is seen on the countenance, the Bible says. Pride is like a chain around a person's neck. The fear of the Lord is to hate pride. How many have ever read that? Shame comes with pride. Contention comes with pride. Pride goes before destruction, a Holy Spirit before a what? Come on, help me. A fall. Amen. So there is, there is the pride of the Amorite. Amen? And brother, let me tell you something. Uh, pride means self-importance. It means egoism. Vanity. Conceit, self-love, self-glorification, vainglory, immodesty, smugness, self-satisfaction, uh, on display, a show, ostentation, parade, pomp, air, pretension, swagger, arrogance, haughtiness, pomposity. There's a lot of names for pride. And we all need to be set free. I remember one time Irma was preaching on pride. She probably don't remember it. She, pre she was preaching on pride, and she came right back and said, Get this pride out of me. <laughs> so, so we prayed for her. I mean, believe you've got to get delivered of what you preach. Come on. <laughs> so you may have to lay hands on me tonight, Bill. <laughs> Praise God. It's all right. We need it. We need it. Amen? Sure, sure. Amorite means to but all, This word also means to speak against something or to say or speak against someone. Okay? I mean, oh, you'll lo locate the Amorite with the mouth. Can you hear me? He's a motor mouth. <laughs> okay. Go to Numbers 12. We, uh, we do need some deliverance, don't we? <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> Numbers 12. Numbers 12. Hallelujah. Praise God. But brethren, we have a lot of promoting ourselves. My ministry, my gifts, come on, my power, you know, plug ourselves. I want to tell you, Jesus is the one we lift up. Jesus is the preeminent one. Jesus is the one we exalt. Amen? It's His ministry. Come on, it's His power. It's His gift. It's His name. It's His nature. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, in chapter 12, how many know in verse 2 that Aaron, uh, Mir Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses? And notice what it says. Has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us, and the Lord heard it? You know, you know, when we exalt ourselves, we usually put somebody else down. Isn't that true? They revile against Moses in this chapter right here. Now, we know that in the Lord, Moses, the authority was Moses, Aaron, and Miriam in the Lord. But in birth, it was Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. Do you, you, hear, you hear what I said? But when God called them out, he called them out. Moses, come out. <laughs> Aaron, come out. Miriam, come out. And so they revile against God's authority. They spoke words against God's authority. How many know that's dangerous? Come on. Amen. How many believe that? I really believe it. Now, and so we have to watch our words, evil speaking, reviling words, defiling words, blasphemy, uh, slang words, swearing words, jesting words, even boasting, bragging, critical words, all kind of words we all have to be careful about. And I, I saw seven things. I'm not going to go into it from the Bible so much, but number one, the Lord became angry... Uh, or to put it this way, his anger was kindled against them by what they said and what they did. 
How many believe God gets upset sometimes with people's words? Number two, the Lord departed. The Bible said the cloud departed off the tabernacle. Now, what happens when God departs? You lose the blessing, the protection, the power, the covering, the presence, the glory, the fire, the anointing, and a curse comes. A curse comes. Can you say amen? And Miriam was struck with leprosy, which was a curse. Death was imminent. But how many thank God Moses prayed? Moses interceded. Amen? And all the eyes was on Miriam. How many believe she was humble that day? Every eye that could see her was up on her. And Miriam was shut out of the camp for seven days. And the camp could not leave, could not move, I should say. It was shut down until she came back in heel by the power of God because someone interceded and prayed for her. Amen? Praise God. Now, let's go to Genesis now, chapter 10. Let's see about this Amorite, where he came in here. Where he came in. Genesis chapter 10. I believe I want to go there. And you'll notice in verse 6, it said, The sons of Ham. Now, remember Ham was the one who saw the nakedness of his father. You remember that? The curse wasn't put on Ham, but it was put on Canaan, wasn't it? Now, now Ham was the youngest of the three sons of Noah, and Canaan was the youngest son, uh, also the grandson. So you have a young, young son not, uh, seeing the father's nakedness, and then you have a young grandson. The curse was put on it. It says here, And the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, and put an Canaan. See that? So Canaan came out, out of the lawns of Ham, didn't he? How many see that? All right, verse 8. And Cush begat who? Come on. Nimrod. Nimrod, this rebel, the rebellious one. How many know that uh, he's number 13 from Adam? And 13 is rebellion. Amen. And he, we know the whole thing about Babylon was rebellious. And how many know Babylon's still going on? But how many believe Babylon's going to fall totally? Amen. Politically, religiously, and economically, the whole thing will fall. How many believe that? Amen. Amen. And so Nimrod was uh, here, uh, the son um, of uh, one of these. Okay, now look on down. Just to, he was a mighty hunter in verse 9. And that, that doesn't mean he went out and hunted for tigers and, and elephants. But he was a hunter of souls, wasn't he? Okay. Now look at verse 15. First, verse 15. And Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and somebody else. He. That means the father of Hitt the Hittites. Notice he was the father uh, of Hittites. But, but he came out of Canaan's loins. Who else did Cain uh, give birth here? The Jebusite, the Amorite, Gergeshite, Hivite, Archite, and all the kites. All of them. Ites, I should say. All the ites. And so they all came out of that Canaan, uh, Canaan thing. Now, look over in Genesis just a minute. Uh, Genesis 10, verse 19. I, I, want, I, I want to give you this verse. Yeah. Let me show you where Canaan's border was. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, Rar, unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom and Gomorrah. So all that perversion was in the Canaanites. Isn't that true? And all these ites, as far as that goes. Amen? So, so we can see that. <clears throat> Praise God. How many know that, how many know that um, Nimrod was the great son of Noah, great grandson of Noah? Amen? And Noah was the tenth from Adam. Okay, praise God. Now, so let's go a little farther with this. Now, let's go to Numbers 13. Let's see where the Amorites dwell. Let's see where they dwell. Gen uh, Numbers 13, 29. Numbers 13, 29. You know, one of the greatest testing I ever went through is when God showed me these seven nights and the meanings of them. Numbers 13, 29. Let's see what it says. It says, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell where? Where are they dwelling? Come on. In the mountains. How many know those demons want to be in those high heavenly places? Come on. Those princes, those principalities. And that's where they're at, and that's where we have to bring them down. Isn't that true? They're living in the mountains. Then you read in Joshua 11, 3, the very same thing. In fact, one of the meanings for the Amorite is mountaineer. Mountain, they want to live in the mountains, which is a picture of demons in the heavenlies. Okay? And so that's where that pride is, that haughtiness, arrogancy, boastfulness. You see, it's in the high place. They want to live in a high place. Can you understand that? Another meaning for the Amorite is boasting of self or bragging. Bragging. So they're, they're, they're a type of principalities and powers in high places, heavenly places, 
that we have to bring down. Praise God. Another scripture says, they're, they're, they're the dwellers of the summits. And that word summit speaks of height or the peak or the highest point or the apex, the top, the pinnacle, the zenith. They want to be the top guy. How many of those demons want to be exalted? Come on, but they must be brought down and Jesus lifted up. Amen? And so they are, they speak of the highlander, it speaks of pride, prominence, publicity, and all those things that we've mentioned here. There's a lot here. Praise God. Now, let's, how are we going to deal with this enemy? God, God gave me, uh, actually, God gave me seven things that, that how you have to deal with the Canaanite, I mean, with the uh, Amorite. Number one, number one, I'll just give them to you now. I usually give them at the end, but I'm going to give them to you now. Number one, how many know you've got to use the sword, the Word of God, against that enemy? This sword right here will defeat every Amorite. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And I'll show you that. Two, you've got to destroy the images um, or all that pride that's built up in our minds. You've got to overthrow those images. Anything that gives those demons strength, uh, you see, which is uh, from idolatry, from false worship, and all those things, we've got to drive them out. We've got to destroy those images and all those idols that's built up even in our own mind of pride. Amen? And all those things that we've mentioned. Number three, the Bible said we have to destroy His fruit above and yet root Him out. And that fruit is pride. It's not a good fruit. It's a bad fruit. And then number four, we have to possess His land after we drive Him out. How many believe there's some demon power on some things that you need tonight? Maybe your finances. Come on, amen? Or whatever, else, whatever it may be. You've got to drive him out in order to take over what belongs to you. And then the Bible said this in the... We'll see it later. You've got to contend with that Amorite. You've got to contend with that spirit, which means just warfare. Isn't that true? Another scripture said you have to dispossess him. Praise God. And here's the last one. You've got to guard your words, as I said a while ago. What you say. Amen? Oh, the Amorite will move right in on you and me. Can you say amen? <laughs> okay. All right. Now, let's go a little farther with this. Let's, I'm going to give you a scripture. I was going to give you one while ago. Let's go over to... Let's go over to... Um, let's see here. I want to go over to Genesis 48. And I want to show you you've got to use the sword. Genesis 48. Hallelujah. And I confess to you, brethren, we don't know very much, as we should know tonight. Are you hearing me? Right. We don't know very much. But He knows everything. He is everything. Genesis forty-eight twenty-one. And Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you, and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given, you the, given thee one portion above. Well, how many know one above me makes two? Anybody want two, two portions tonight? Anybody want a double portion tonight? Yeah. Amen. He said, I've given to thee one portion above thy brethren, the half-brethren, which I took out of the hand of who? Come on. The Amorite. How did he do it? With my sword. Now, that was a natural sword. And with my bow. I want to tell you, brother, you don't need no natural sword. You're going to kill that Amorite today. It's going to take this sword right here to cut his head off. Can you say Amen. Destroy him. Hallelujah. So we need the Word of God. Amen. To come on into that double portion. So on that double portion ministry, there's an Amorite. There's pride. Amen. And we've got to destroy him. Now look, go to Exodus. Um, no, I think I, I saw that. I think I give you that. Uh, I'll skip that. Go to Amos. Go to Amos. Amos chapter 2. Hallelujah. Amos 2. Anybody have warfare before we got here this, this day? Come on, raise your hand. Man, I tell you what I... Last few days, I've been fighting not everything. Come on, how about you? Huh? More so this time for some reason. Amen. But how many of the Lord God is here? <laughs> Do what, Doc? Amen. That's right, Doc. I've learned that. Amen. You're right. Okay, Amos chapter 2. Amos chapter 2. Now, now look here. Look, look in verse. Look in chapter 2. And look down to verse 9. Here's what the prophet said. Yet destroyed I the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars. How I many see pride there? He's tall, of course. 
and he was strong as the oaks, strength. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above. I cut off that old pride. And notice, and his roots from beneath. How many believe we're just cutting off a few limbs and leaves here and there? Come on, it's time to hit the bough of the tree. It's time to hit the trunk of the tree. And it's time to hit those roots and get them out. Amen? Then he said, Also I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you forty years through the wilderness to possess the land, to possess the land of the Amorites. Not just enter, but take it by force. Amen? And possess it. Conquer it. Hallelujah. How many believe that? Amen. So he had to get on top of him, and he also had uh, to root him out as well. He had to possess the land. And then you notice it says here, his height was what? Like the height of the cedar. Now, how many know that a cedar is stately in the natural? It's strong. Come on, it's durable, isn't it? It's got deep roots. It's tall. It has a good smell. And how many know it's got life in it? It's green. But you know what, brethren? This is not life here. This is death, isn't it? I said, this is death. The Amorite is death. And he has to be destroyed. Can you say amen? amen? So we have to cut him off, root him out, cut that old pride down in our own life, and possess... Look there again in verse 10. Notice again. He said, go and possess the land of the Amorite. Your inheritance. There's an Amorite on your inheritance, brethren. How many know Jesus is our inheritance tonight? Yours and mine. Praise God. So we have to deal. We have to cut him off. We have to, we have to destroy him. Praise God. So there's an enemy that wants to, to, that's seeking to stop you and me from entering the land or the inheritance or the rest of God. Can you say amen? Praise God. So he hits you. You know when he hits you? The Amorite will hit you in your testing time. How many believe that? In your weakness. Come on. Amen. I want to show you this. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy 2. Deuteronomy 2. Dear Lord, help us tonight. Chapter 2, verse 24. Now, here's Moses telling God's people. How many believe it's good to hear somebody's got a command from God? Amen. I don't care who he or she is. If it's from God, let's hear it and do it. Amen? Praise God. Deuteronomy 2, 24. Rise you up. Take your journey. Pass over the river Arnon. Behold, I've given unto thee into thine hand Sihon, the Amorite. Now, here's the king. King of Heshbon and his land began to possess it. And notice what God says. Contend with him in the battle. And let me tell you something. If you contend with that Amorite, you'll have a battle. You know, he's first cousins to Leviathan, you know. <laughs> you will have, this is an offensive war. God said you go after him and you contend with him. Amen. It's a command. Now, let me ask you a question. Will God tell you to do something you can't do? No, no, he will not, will he? He was saying you must contend, literally engage him in warfare. That also means to stir him up. Or it means to strive to anger. Make him mad. Hallelujah. And kill him. <laughs> cut, his, cut his head off. <laughs> or you could kill him. <laughs> cut his head off. Whatever. Destroy him in our lives. But it's going to be a battle. And you have to exercise faith and obedience. Can you say Amen. Now, look at this. Four things is in this verse. Watch that verse again. Look at four things what God says. He said, rise you up. I mean, other times we don't feel like rising up. Huh? Anybody? Anybody? Raise your hand. <laughs> hey, come on. God said, rise you up. You may be saying, Lord, I'm tired. I don't feel like rising up. I feel like going to bed. <laughs> or two, the second thing he said, pass over the river Arnon. Get to moving. Get to marching. And three, began to possess the land of the Amorite. You just began. You start. I mean, you will never possess the land until you start. You've got to begin somewhere. Isn't that right? You know, you don't get to third base until you go to first. Isn't that right? Amen. And then he said, contend with him in the battle. And I'll tell you, brother, when you contend with him, you'll have a, you'll have a battle. But thank God. Jesus has conquered every demon, every devil. Come on, every prince, every fallen angel. Every stronghold there is. And through His name and blood, we have victory. Can somebody say amen? Now look at verse 30. Look at verse 30. But Sion, king of Heshbon, it says here, would not let us pass by him. 
For the Lord thy God hardened his spirit. How many know that God hardened Pharaoh? And here's another guy. And made his heart obstinate that he might, come on, deliver him into thine hand as appeareth this day. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I begun to give Sihon and his land before thee, began, and he says again, to possess that thou mayest inherit his land. Then Sihon came out against us, he and all his people, to fight at Jahaz. And the Lord our God delivered him before us. We smote him and his sons and all his people, and we took all his cities at that time and utterly destroyed the men, the women, the little ones of every city. We left none to remain. Now look at the last verse, of th- verse 36. He said here, There was not one city too strong for us. Did you hear that? There was not one city too strong for us. There's not one demon too strong for us. Come on. There's not no fallen angel too strong for us in the name of Jesus. Come on. And the power of Jesus. Can you hear that? The Lord our God delivered us all unto us, he said. Hallelujah. And where was this place in verse 36? A-R-O-E-R. Let me see that. And I'll say something about that in just a second. Sihon. Here's the big boy. Amen? I mean, if you get the big, the largest spirit, the, the one that's the strongest, the others will just be like dominoes. Come on. If you go after the main one. Isn't that right? And this word Sihon means tempestuous, uh, to wipe away or sweeping. That's what his name actually means. And so he's a picture of a ruling prince, you see here. And so God says, go after him. Heshbon, he, notice the word Heshbon here. He was the king of Heshbon. It means intelligence. Destroy the enemy's intelligence, his reasoning powers. Amen? And so forth. And then, and then God says in verse 25, there, look at verse 25 again. He said, this day, this day, will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven. How many believe that God is putting some fear in in us, but he's going to put the fear in the nations out there the time he gets through? There's going to be a lot of God's fears going to hit the people out there. Amen? When judgment starts hitting, how many believe it's going to drive some people to Jesus? Amen? How many believe that? Amen. Amen. When those righteous judgments are in the earth, amen, they're going, some of them are going to learn the Lord. Isn't that right? Amen. So the enemy's trembling here. He's in anguish. He's in misery, the Bible here says. He's having a nervous breakdown. Hallelujah. How many say amen to that? <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And so he ruled from this place here in verse 36, a roar, it says, which means situation of nudity. I mean, America's full of sex sins tonight, from the White House to the church house. Come on. Magazines, TV, Hollywood, you name it. I mean, it's there. But it's also in the church. It has to be dealt with. How many unclean? It should not be in the house of God. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now, look in Deuteronomy. Uh, no, Numbers 32. Numbers 32. 32.29. 32.29. I believe that's the one I want. I think that's one. Numbers 32.29. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Okay, look in verse 39. It's in 39. Uh, did I say 29? 39. 32, 39. 32, 39. And the children of nature, the son of Manasseh, went to Gilead and took it. And notice, dispossessed the Amorite which was in it. And that means they drove them out, the previous tenants out. Hallelujah. And they possessed his place. Praise God. And that word means to rob or to expel, to destroy, to seize upon. So... We have some enemies we have to destroy in order to take the land. Take back what is ours. Amen. First Kings 21. Let's go over there. First Kings 21. Then I, I, I'm kind of in a hurry because I want to get to something else here that the Lord spoke to me today. First Kings 21. Hallelujah. Verse 25. First Kings 21, 25. How many believe that there was two wicked people in the earth called Ahab and Jezebel? And it says in verse 25, But there was none like unto Ahab. How many know Ahab's in the church? So is Jezebel. Where you have a Jezebel, how many of you got an Ahab or vice versa? And it can be in men and women, can it? Which did sell himself. Now look at that word. Which did sell himself. Ahab, sell, he sells out. I wonder if that's happening today in places. I know it is. 
to work wickedness, come on, in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. That word stirred up means stimulate. She's to stimulate, seduce, to entice, to persuade, to provoke. She did all that towards Ahab. Okay? Then, <clears throat> notice though what it says. And he did very abominably in following idols according to all things as did the Amorites whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. He did everything that the Amorites did. Pride. Pride. Amen? And how many know Ahab fell? The prophet put a word on Ahab and Jezebel, didn't he? Amen? Then, a, then we go to Ezra. One other scripture here in Ezra that I want to give you. Ezra 9. Thank God for the word tonight. How many thank God for His Word? Ezra 9. All right, now, it says here in Ezra 9, Now when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations, either the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that, that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in their trespass. And when I heard these things, this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle, tucked off the hair of my head and my beard, and sat down astonished. So he, he saw this, this mixture with the heathen. And how many know if you've got sons and daughters, brethren? Tell them to marry a Christian tonight. Right. Encourage your grandchildren to marry Christians tonight. People who love God and who are like faith. Come on, amen. I mean, I mean, I mean, know there's a lot of hurts tonight because people uh, have left their kids just marry any and everybody. How I many know we've all made some mistakes probably in that area possibly, and so we we need to encourage them to marry Christians. Amen. So this so this thing became an abomination. It was disgusting, abhorrence, and idolatry. Uh, you see there. Now, now I want to go over to Revelation. And God spoke to me today that He's going to bring this pride down in man. How many believe He's going to do it? He's going to do it first in the church, isn't He? And then out there, of course. And we know God's dealing with the church first, isn't He? That's, uh, I, I believe that. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. I believe it. So let's go to Revelation. Go over to chapter, let's see, go to chapter 6. And I want to show you where I think we're coming, where we are in the church today, possibly. I don't say these things dogmatically, but, but in chapter 6 of Revelation, <clears throat> Brother Bill tested about, about the seals while ago. Only Jesus could loose those seals, the Lamb. Isn't that right? <clears throat> and, and here in chapter 6, we see in verse... <clears throat> let's see. <clears throat> look, in verse, um, look in verse 12. I believe this is where we are in, t in time. I believe we've come up to the sixth seal. I know others that believe that as well. But, uh, uh, you know, I believe we're in that time zone, somewhere in there. Now, look at verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. And, lo, there was a great earthquake. Now, I believe this, this is more than just, you know, um, an earthquake out there, that, you know, the, where the ground rumbles. How many believe there's a lot of things shaking tonight? <laughs> Isn't that right, Bill? Amen. It's in man. It's in kingdoms. It's in uh, people. It's in life. Uh, how many know there was an earthquake over in Jonesboro the other day? Come on. And all that destruction there. Isn't that right? The children and the school teacher. But, but this is a great earthquake. Notice, not just an earthquake. A great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she's shaken of a mighty wind. Now, notice that. Did you notice that word there? It says, it says untimely figs. Now, look at verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth... Now, there's seven different classes of people right here. Seven. The kings of the earth and the great men and the rich man, men and the chief captains and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks. They're talking to the rocks. 
<laughs> Fall on us. Hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. Who shall be able to stand? Question mark. Okay? Now, let's go back to Isaiah 34. No, Isaiah 2. Isaiah 2 first. Isaiah 2. We see that Isaiah saw exactly what John saw. How many of the old prophets saw what uh, John saw, what the prophet saw? The, the prophet saw what John saw. Okay, Isaiah chapter 2. Now look in verse 6 of chapter 2 of Isaiah. And we see in chapter 2, verse 6, the Lord says here to his people that, Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they've been replenished from the east, and are soothsayers, that's the occult, like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers or foreigners. Verse 7. Now watch this. Their land also is full of silver and gold. That sounds like America, doesn't it? Neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end to their chariots. I mean, we've got a lot of automobiles on our highways, too. Their land also is full of idols, idolatry. They worship the work of their hands, own hands, that which their own fingers have made. Verse 9. And the mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself, therefore forgive them not. Verse 10. Now watch this. What is he saying? Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for the fear of the Lord and the glory of, the, of His majesty. Now verse 11. Now look at this. Here is this pride. Here is this Amorite spirit. God spoke to me today about this. The lofty looks of man shall be what? Come on. Humble. And the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Verse 12, For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. And upon all the cedars, there's that old pride again of Lebanon, that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, those that are strong in themselves, and say, we can do it. No, they're going to fall. And upon all the high mountains, and upon the hills that are lifted up, and upon the high tower, and upon the fence wall, and upon the ships of Tarshish. There's a message there, right there. And upon all pleasant pictures, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haunters of man shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks, in the caves of the earth, for the fear of the Lord. That's exactly what Revelation 6 says. And for the glory of His majesty, when He rises to shake terribly the earth, in that day a man shall cast his eyes of silver, his eyes of gold, which they have made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, and go to the clefts of the rocks and to the tops of the ragged rocks, for fear of the Lord and for the glory of His majesty, when He rises to shake terribly the earth. Brethren, God is going to bring down all... Of those things. Amen? Lofty looks. Haughtiness. Proud. Pride. Loftiness. Man lifting up himself. Cedars, the high things. The lifting up of, of man's self. High mountains. The hills and all those things. Now look back in chapter 2 just a second. How many believe God's establishing His church in the midst of all of this? Yes, sir. Yep. He's raising up a strong people. A people that go down, God's raising up. Do you believe that? Amen. In chapter 2, verse 2, it shall come to pass when? 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 Brethren? In the last days, that the mountain of the Lord's house, hallelujah, shall be, come on, established where? You know why it's going to be established in the top? Because she went down. God's raising her up. Amen. Through Christ. How many believe that? And shall be exalted above what else? The hills. Look back down to verse 14. Let's look at those hills. And upon all the high mountains and upon all the hills that are lifted up, so the church is above all the pride of man through Christ. And all nations, come on, shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the Lord God of Jacob. He will teach us of His ways. We'll walk in His paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Praise God. And He's going to judge the nations. Brethren, we're in the time that God is bringing the lofty looks and the pride of man down. Amen? He's going to destroy it. I tell you, Jesus is going to be exalted in that day. Hallelujah. And all pride, haughtiness, arrogance, and all those things that are in man must be destroyed. Now, one other scripture before I close. In, in the chapter 34 of Isaiah. This goes with that sixth seal as well. Isaiah chapter 34. We want to read just a few verses here. 
because he's talking about that sixth seal in both chapters, chapter 2 and chapter 34. And so in verse 1, he says, Isaiah says, Come near, you nations to hear, and hearken. You people, let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world, and all things that shall come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon what? What's it upon? All nations. Is that including America? Yes. His fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out. Their stinks shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Now look at verse 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. Now that's what he said over in Revelation 6. I mean, I may believe that, I may believe that God gave us a covenant and a promise in the Old Testament to never destroy the earth again by water. Isn't that true? Now we know the earth will be purged by fire some way by God. I mean, no, it's going to start here though first. Right here. But God's, I tell you something, there's going to be great destruction. Now listen, great destruction in the earth, but the whole world will not totally be destroyed. There's going to be great destruction. I mean, no, it says, for the elect's sake, sakes, those days shall be shortened. What does that mean? That means the devil would kill everybody, brethren, if it wasn't for an intervention by God. And God will intervene through the elect. They'll stop it. Amen. Full destruction. There is going to be destruction. Are you hearing me? Right. There's going to be destruction. Now, look at this. All the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as what? A scroll. And all the hosts shall fall down, and the leaf fall from off the vine, and, and the falling of the fig tree. There it is. For my, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven, and so forth. Then verse, verse 8. Verse 8, I believe it is, I want. It says here, For in, uh, it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of the recompense for the controversy of Zion. Hallelujah. Amen. So God has given us hope. In fact, as I was studying chapter 10 of Revelation last night, I saw that great war break out in chapter 9. Demonic powers come out of the earth. How many know we're facing third world war? Amen. Did you hear what I said? We're facing a war where many people are going to be destroyed in the earth. But you know, in chapter 10, he gives us a great promise. Yes. He saw that angel, which is a picture and type of Jesus. Hallelujah. He had a rainbow. Come on. Over him. Clothed with a cloud. Amen. And you know what? His left foot, a right foot was over the nations. His left foot on the earth. How many believe he's still king of the nations right. and over the carnal realm? Amen? Amen. And he's saying, I'm in charge. I'm reigning. Hallelujah. In the midst of war, Hallelujah. destruction, and death. He's in control, isn't he? Amen. Hallelujah. He's in control. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord God Almighty. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, good. Let's stand and pray then. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've said enough tonight. Praise the Lord. Handelabra kitalabra solabra kianda. For surely the hand of the Lord is upon thee, saith God. And I shall move thee as I move Samson of old. I shall move thee in this hour. And thou shalt be a different person. Thou shalt be moved by my spirit and by my power. Yea, submit to the Holy Spirit. Yea, be not afraid of me. Be not afraid of the Spirit. For yea, I've come to love you. I've come to minister life and health and strength to thee, saith the Lord. I am your head. I am your covering. And I, the Lord, am the one that shall lead thee out and lead you in. Fear not thine enemy. Yea, I've conquered every one. Yea, rise up in thy God and know that I've given you faith and I've given you power over all the works of the enemy, saith the Lord. Come on, let's praise Him. Amen? Praise Him. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. Brother Bill, the Lord said, I want to, My son, I want to encourage you tonight to let you know that I love you and that I have truly heard your prayer. Uh, your prayers have come up as incense before me. And truly, I shall answer those prayers. Many of those prayers shall be answered yet that have not been answered, but I have not forgotten them, saith the Lord. And yea, I've seen your travail. I've seen your work. I've seen your heartache. And God said there's coming a mighty healing, not only within, but even without, saith the Lord. And the Lord's going to use you in a mighty way, in a mighty uh, outpouring in this hour. So my son, where I put you, stay there. God said there's going to be a mighty move, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. Let's praise Him tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, brethren, our work is not for naught. God sees what where we're at. Every one of us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jim, uh, the Lord is with thee. And, uh, and God said that, that I'm working with your hands 
and with your fingers, yea, even against the enemy. And God said, I will strengthen you and help you, my son. And yea, I shall raise thee up in this hour, and thou shalt be a spokesman for the Lord. And thou shalt go forth in my name as I open doors, as I, uh, as I direct thee, saith the Lord, as, I, as you hear the voice of the Lord. So fear not, saith God, for I'm calling you out of the corner as a teacher to teach my word, yea, even to many in this hour. So do, do not be surprised at what God shall say to thee in the night season, for I have some things I want to tell thee directly. You shall hear my voice, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's praise Him. Let's praise our Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Now, we, I, want to, I want to deal with this pride. How many, how many would like to deal with some pride in your own life? Come on. Amen. I, I got some too, just like you do. All right. How many know we're all in the same boat in some areas? Amen. So I'm not ashamed to get deliverance. A lot of times when I call them out, I get deliverance. Praise God. So if you feel something coming up that you want to get rid of, that, that you feel it's not of the Lord, let her go. Amen? Amen. Don't worry about the guy on your left or the right or in front or back. Amen? Don't worry about the devils. <laughs> get up, let them go. How many know we're going to cleanse this place anyway and command them to get out of here tonight anyway? Amen? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus. We humble our hearts. We are nothing in ourselves. We trust in our Savior. He is the Deliverer. And Lord, I've come. And I ask You to deliver me tonight. Set me free, Lord, from all these things. Help me tonight, Lord. Send Your mighty warring angels around this place tonight. I bind the power of darkness. And I open up to the Holy Ghost. The Lord said, If I cast out demons... By the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. I thank you for the kingdom, Father, because you're, you are the deliverer tonight. And I command the spirit of pride to loose me. Come out of me now. In the name of Jesus. Haughtiness, arrogance, boastfulness, loose me now. All right, take a deep breath and let her go. Come on, call it out, let her go. <laughs> name of Jesus. Come on. Name of Jesus. All pride. Boastfulness. Come out of the people. Come out. Come out. Come out. All pride. Boastfulness. Come out of them, Jesus. Arrogancy. All self-importance. Self-importance. Come out in Jesus' name. Egoism. Vanity. Come on. Conceit. Self-love. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come on. Take a deep breath and breathe them out. Get them out. Call them out. Come on. You may want to let them go, brother, in any way. Vainglory, immodesty, smugness, self-satisfaction. Come out of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Anything that's dis that, that causes a display in my life or your life, come out in Jesus' name. Anything that draws attention to ourselves, come out in the name of Jesus. I break that pride. Come out, pride. Come out, pride. Come out, haughtiness. Loose, loose, loose. Loose them in Jesus' name. All pride. All pride. Ostentation. Parade. Anything that would parade around uh, to exalt yourself. Be, you know, pomp. Any airs. Pretension. Arrogance. Haughtiness. Pomposity. Loose. Loose the people of God in this place in Jesus' name. Come out. All, all pride. Loose. Leviathan, I command you to go. You Amorites, you come out. Come out. All Amorite spirits and Leviathan. Come out, Leviathan. I break your power, you serpent spirit. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Come on, take one more deep breath with me. Come on. Come on, let them go. Let them go. Come on, let them go. All pride. Come out, pride. Come out, Amorite. Come out, Leviathan. Come out. Loose, loose. Loose the people over here. Loose. Loose them in Jesus' name. Let them go. Let them go. That's it. That's it. Let them go in Jesus' name. All pride. All pride. Father, forgive us for pride. Let's repent of pride. Father, forgive us for pride. Wash us, Father, in the blood of... Lord, we humble ourselves before you, Father God. We go down, Father. We, by an act of our will, we go down tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. We lift you up, Jesus. And all demonic powers that exalts me or exalts man, I command it to come down tonight in this place. Jesus, you be seen. Jesus, you be heard. Jesus, you be lifted up among us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Lord, by the sword we cut off the Amorite. The Word of God will use it, Father. We destroy His images, His idols, Lord, in our life. Amen. The fruit of pride, we cut you down and root you out of us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. We possess the land. Hallelujah. We contend with that spirit of the Amorite. 
We contend with you, you pride spirit. Come out in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. You obey the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, I ask the blood to settle down over us tonight. The blood of Jesus to settle down over each heart and mind right here tonight. The holy blood of Jesus. That blood that defeats every demon. That blood destroyed all demonic powers. That blood, Lord, let it just minister now to the minds and hearts of the people. And I command every demonic power to leave this building tonight that's, been, that's come out of the people. You go in Jesus' name. You leave this building, this premise, through the blood and the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Hallelujah. 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 I feel there's some people here on the right arm. Um, anybody got a problem in the right arm? I want you to just raise your hand if you've got a problem. Just keep, raise your hand. Keep it up. Anybody else got a problem in your right arm? Right. Okay. Okay, Father, right now, I speak healing to their bodies right now in Jesus' name. I command, Lord God, that, that, um, uh, that to go in Jesus' name. I ask you to heal them, Lord, and these three ladies right here in Jesus' name. The power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Lord, minister healing and health and strength to them now. Totally and completely. Anybody else back there had a right hand up? Your right hand. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else got a word of the Lord? And God has given you something. Praise the Lord. I believe I'm through. Hallelujah. Praise God. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Father, we just thank you for this night. We thank you for the meetings tomorrow, Lord, and the ministries that we'll share. And Lord, give each one a good night's rest tonight and strengthen their bodies, Lord. We ask it in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you that, that the pride is beginning to be dealt with in our lives tonight. Lord Jesus, again, we exalt you and lift you up among the people of God. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We love you. May the Lord bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. And I shall heal you, and I shall deliver you. For yea, as you seek my face, and as you seek to come to me, I shall break the chains of bondage, and the anointing shall break the yoke of bondage that is healthy, and thou shalt go out like a well-fed calf from the stall, hallelujah. saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. this that thou hast entered the land. But now thou must also conquer the land. And yea, thou must drive out the inhabitants thereof. Because you see, every place that the sole of thy foot doth come upon, it shall be thine. So know thou this, thou did not just come to the camp to fill a date. Yea, thou art here by an appointed time, saith thy God. But arise from this camp, yea, and go forward and go, yea, and dispel everything that's within the land. Because the hour has come that thou must conquer the land, saith thy God. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. The cloud of glory is to me. To Mr. Cloud. To Mr. Cloud. Now the cloud of glory is to me.
the cloud, moves with the cloud, well, the cloud of glory is this evening service this is the end of this message our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com there are many free audio files there it's like going to bible school at home